Good morning, and welcome to this time of worship at the Gilead Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. It was our hope to be outside in our Garden of Remembrance this morning, but the weather had other ideas, so we're here in our sanctuary, and welcome everyone who is here, and also all those who are joining us online on Facebook or YouTube. Just a reminder, if you're joining us on Facebook, that you're invited to share your prayer requests, which will be passed along to me for our time of prayer. And just a reminder, when sharing requests, that our Facebook page is an open page. We do hope to move worship outside next Sunday. While we aren't limited to seating outside, we do ask you to sign up on the link in our weekly e-newsletter so that we can keep track of all who are present. Our Board of Missions also invites you as Mother's Day approaches to make a donation to Church World Service and their blanket program. For a donation either online or here, there are Mother's Day cards that are available. You can get them after worship or also by calling our church office. Also, this Thursday, April 29th, will be Sally's last day with us, 19 years serving as our administrative assistant. We are so grateful for Sally's presence and all of her years with us. In lieu of an in-person gathering, Sally has requested that we send cards and notes of thanks to her home, and her address is in our weekly e-newsletter. Also, next Sunday, May 2nd, our Board of Christian Education will be offering an opportunity for all of the young people in our congregation up through eighth grade. There is a sign-up link in our e-news so that they can prepare materials. We hope that you will join them. There's also a link in our e-newsletter for willing weeders to weed around our church and garden of remembrance this season as things start to spring forth. We invite you to sign up for a weekend, keep our church grounds looking beautiful. We begin our worship service now with our morning's prelude. Will all those who can do so comfortably please stand and join with me in our responsive call to worship. Shepherding God, be with us and guide us in this time of worship. We have come as many people with diverse values, gifts, and experiences. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is God is my shepherd. God is my shepherd, I'll not want, I feed 
in pastures green. God grants me rest and bids me drink from waters calm and clean. Through daily tasks I'm blessed and led by one I have not seen. Restored to life each morning new, I rise up from the dust to follow God whose presence gives me confidence and trust. I praise the name of God today. In God I put my trust. When I must pass through shadowed vale where loss and death await, I will not fear, for God is there, my shepherd strong and great, whose rod and staff will comfort me and all my fears abate. No enemy can overcome, no power on earth defeat. The ones anointed by God's grace and fed with manna sweet. My cup is filled and overflows as I my Savior greet. Goodness and mercy all my days will surely follow me. And where God reigns in heaven and earth, my dwelling place will be. My shepherd blesses, cares, and leads through all eternity. Please be seated. Join me in our unison prayer of invocation in Lord's Prayer. Shepherding God, we come together as sheep of your fold to worship you. We meet in your name confident that we are known and loved by you. Help us to draw close to you, that by loving trust and attentive listening, we may grow in love that is genuine in its caring and self-sacrifice. Nurture and equip us as faithful followers of your gospel so that we may serve you humbly and faithfully. For it is the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And we have two live children in our audience for the children's message. How about that? But I'm not forgetting you folks out there online. OK. Today, our message is a, kind of a simple four-letter word, but it's a very important one. It's love. And I have to start right out by admitting to you I've used it very carelessly. I say things like, I love ice cream. I love movies. Do I really love that way? Well, I don't know, but think about that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a story. There was a sanctuary where elephants lived. And a sanctuary is a place, it's a special safe place for animals when they're injured or hurt or they can no longer be in the zoo. And 
that's what this place was. And so there were lots of elephants, and one of them was named Tara. There was a dog who wandered in there one day, moved in, decided to live there with the elephants, and Tara and the dog Bella became very best friends. They played together, they walked together, they ate together, they ran around together. They spent all their time together. They loved each other. Well, one day, Bella had an injury in her leg, so she had to go to live at the office and recuperate while she got better. Well, Tara went to the office and hovered and waited out there all the time, wondering, you know, where is she? Well, the, one of the workers came out and brought Bella so that they could see each other, and they were very happy to see each other. Well, it took three weeks for the leg to heal, and Tara just stayed there and waited the whole three weeks. And then finally, Bella got better, and she came out, and she could resume her good times and her fun with her friend that she loved, Tara. So they resumed <coughs> playing, running, skipping around, all the fun things that they had done before. They didn't need words to tell each other that they loved each other. They showed each other that. In the Bible, it teaches us that um, to love not only with words, you know, as we do in actions, and it says, but in deed and truth. So think about it for a minute and think about ways that you can show love besides words. How often do you, I even say it, love you. Well, there are other ways to show love without words. The kindnesses that we do for each other, even just spending time quietly with each other, that's pretty special. That's love. Okay, let's say a prayer together. Lord, help us to love with our actions and not just by empty words. May people see your love in us as we pass that love on to others. Amen. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. singing in the air over my head I hear singing in the air over my head I hear singing in the air there must be a God somewhere Amen. There must be a God somewhere. We know there is a God somewhere, but because too often we fail to follow the leading of God, to listen to the voice of our good shepherd and go astray, join with me now in our prayer and time of confession. 
Let us pray together. Good Shepherd, we confess that we have wandered down the strange pathways of our world. We, like sheep, have gone astray. We have trusted other voices and turned away from your truth. We have failed to use our overflowing cups to fill the cups of sisters and brothers who need what we could offer. Forgive us when we do not follow you and give us ears to hear your loving call so that we might be restored to your fold. Amen. Friends, the good news is that God cares for all of the sheep. Even when we wander, God seeks us out, brings us back, and loves us always. Thanks be to God. Please remain standing for our prayer hymn, My Shepherd, You Supply My Need. My Shepherd, You Supply My Need, Most Oh 
please be seated. And as we come to our time of prayer, I have some joys to share with you this morning. One is that today is Deb and Ed's 40th wedding anniversary. We wish them God's blessings on this very special day. We also extend a happy birthday to Joe in South Carolina. And this week, we also share a happy birthday to Betty on Thursday, her 92nd, and also on 30, on Thursday, Jim's mother's, Marion's 96th birthday. I also have some concerns to share with you this morning. Roxanne asked for our prayers for Mona, who's now in rehab following a hospital stay and is continuing to receive treatments for a serious lung and leg infection. Prayers also for Reverend Bob, who will be having hip replacement surgery tomorrow, and also for his wife Sue, who will be having shoulder replacement surgery this week on Friday. We also want to keep B in our prayers. B was in the hospital and is now in rehab. We pray for her healing. Teresa also asked for prayers for a good friend of her father's, Frank, who is in the hospital. We also want to continue to keep Michelle in our prayers, who's home following recent surgery. Janet asks that we continue to keep Sarah in our prayers. She continues in the hospital following a recent stem cell transplant. We also want to keep Pat in our prayers on the loss this week of her husband, Peter, who is also Ned's cousin. Jessica asks for our continued prayers for her mother, Rosemary, who's in rehab following surgery and awaiting being able to go back for a colonoscopy. Marie asks for prayers for Louise, who has lung cancer. Jessica also asks for our prayers for Trisha, a friend, um, and her doctors as she anticipates having open heart surgery in the next couple of days. Amy asks for our prayers for her Aunt Elizabeth, who will be returning from Haiti for a visit. Suzanne asks for our prayers for her aunt who continues to struggle with dementia. She also asks for our prayers for insight and awareness for God's ways and for God's peace. And following this historic week in our nation, we pray for an end to racism in all of our hearts and in our nation. Let us join now in our time of prayer, first for your own personal prayer and then our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. O oh, ever loving and ever caring God, we unite our hearts in prayer this day. We unite our hearts in gratitude in gratitude for your love and your caring, in gratitude for your revelation in our shepherd and our savior, Jesus Christ. And we lift up our prayers of gratitude this day for the 40 years that Deb and Ed have shared together in marriage. And we give thanks for Joe and Betty and Marion for their lives and the celebrations of their birthdays and also for Jenna and the celebration of her 19th birthday today. And God, we know as a community of faith that in this life that there are many who would want to claim to be our saviors and our shepherds and who would call us and entice us to follow them. But we remember this day that we belong to you, that you are our shepherd and that in Jesus we can trust, trust you to lead us into green pastures beside still waters, that in him we can trust you to nourish our souls. And we depend on you, O oh God. We entrust ourselves, our lives, and the lives of all whom we love to you, to your guiding, to your guarding. And we lift up our prayers this day for Mona and Bob, for Sue and B, 
for Frank and Michelle, for Sarah and Rosemary, for Pat and Louise, for Trisha and for Elizabeth, for Suzanne's aunt. We pray, O oh God, that you would be with them and heal them. And we lift up our prayers for people at war in our world. We pray especially for those who serve our country in distant lands, guard and guide them, and leaders of the world that peace might come. And we continue to pray for those who work in the medical community and first responders and nursing homes and essential businesses in this time of pandemic. We pray for teachers and children and all who work in our schools, and we lift up names from this community of faith, we remember and pray for Kyle and Jim, for Sarah and James, for Sue and Heidi, for Christine and Brenda, for Marisha and Michelle, for Melissa and Jane. We lift up our prayers for Carolyn, Carrie, Brock, Cindy, Patrick, Christina, Stephen. Be with Allie, Charlotte, David, Diane, Julie, Tom, Annette, Bruce, and Grace. And we pray for all who are struggling in these days, who are in need of your direction and guidance in their lives for those who are struggling financially or emotionally. And oh God, help us, we pray, to care for this, your earth, and give us generous spirits that the earth's resources might be shared and that all may have what they need Keep us ever close to you and keep us sensitive to your voice. Give us strength and vision and comfort. We pray in the name of our good shepherd, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me right. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. For they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second reading comes from First John chapter three, verses sixteen to twenty-four. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved in our hearts, do not condemn us. We have boldness before God, and we, have, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that, that he has given us, for the word of God in the scripture, for the word of God among us, 
for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Well, if there is one thing, one thing that we've learned in this past year of global pandemic is that we are all connected. And I love to be able to say the word through because it does feel now, doesn't it, like we are getting through this time here in the United States with the availability of vaccines and with people getting vaccinated, get vaccinated. But you may also be aware why this pandemic took me by surprise. Pandemics, well, they are nothing new, for they are as old as history itself. But what has changed, what has changed that we as humans can now travel farther and faster than ever before. So what happens in one part of the world quickly impacts what happens in the rest of the world. And this week, we were reminded of that with the uh, president's virtual climate summit, reminded of just how we connected we are, that we have one climate, one atmosphere, and that what one country does impacts us all. And didn't we see that also at the end of March when the ever given that colossal container ship got stuck in the Suez Canal, backing up hundreds of other ships behind it, impacting the flow of commodities around the world. So whether we as Americans who so value our independence, I value our independence, whether we like it or not, whether we want to admit it or not, our lives are not independent of one another. We are not separate from one another, but our lives are intertwined and interconnected one with another. And the same, the same could be said for our faith. Because while we may like to think of our faith as being a personal matter, it being a private thing, and it is to a certain extent, but by far the largest part of our faith is a very public thing, because our faith is not just about what we do in our private prayers and devotion. It's not only what we do here in worship or even in service as a community of faith to our community and to the world, but it's also about how we live our lives each and every day. Do I hear an amen? amen. My grandmother said it this way. The best sermon she ever heard preached was how somebody lived their life. Friends, the proof is in the pudding because what we do, what we say, how we live as Christians, as people of faith, impacts not only ourselves, but it impacts others and it can change the world. Our text from 1 John for this morning puts it this way. We, we know love by this that he laid down, Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for others. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help little children? Let us love not in word and speech. In other words, don't preach it to me, but in truth and action, live it. And my favorite preacher and teacher, the Reverend Dr. Thomas Long, who is now retired, tells the story in the Easter issue of the Journal for Preachers about what happened in the community he lives in, Cambridge, Maryland, in this town. There are two main streets. One of them is called Race Street after the horse races that used to take place there. And, and Race Street runs through primarily the white business district. The other is called Pine Street and it runs through the heart of the black community. 
the two streets, they run parallel to one another, and they are only a block apart, but they might as well be in different countries. But that wasn't always the case. Because back in the 50s and the 60s, both Race Street and Pine Street were vibrant. There were many stores, grocery stores, pharmacies. There were florists and funeral homes and music venues. But then, in that long, hot summer of 1967, in the midst of the civil disturbances across our nation and the stirrings of local racial unrest, a fire was set in the all-black elementary school. No one to this day knows who it was who said it, but the all-white volunteer fire department refused to answer the call. And so that school and several blocks of businesses around it were burned to the ground. The white-run banks then refused to lend money to the black merchants in order to rebuild. And from then on, well, Pine Street has never been the same. Even now, you can hear the lament in the community. It would have only taken one fire truck. But after the death of George Floyd in May, of last year, some artists in the black community came up with an idea. They put together a proposal and took it to the city council, which gave its unanimous approval. So several artists from Pine Street, they brought rollers and brushes and buckets of paint over to Race Street, where they were joined by white artists and ordinary citizens, black and white, and they painted a large and lovely Black Lives Matter mural down the center of Race Street. That was in June. But several weeks later, in the dead of night, a pickup truck stopped in the middle of a deserted race street and began burning rubber up and down the new painting defacing the art with tire marks. The next morning, the community woke to find the Black Lives Matter artwork despoiled. And when the police investigated, well, they discovered that there was a security camera on one of the businesses along Race Street that had recorded the truck in action. It was a distinctive looking pickup, and the driver was soon identified. It was a 21-year-old white man who felt angered by the agitation of black folks. The city council contacted the main artist. She was told about the destruction and invited to repair the painting. She thought it over and replied that she had another idea, maybe a better one. She invited the young man who had defaced the art to have a conversation with her. Shocked, sh shocked and embarrassed that his deed of hate that was done under the cover of night was now public knowledge, the young man reluctantly agreed. She told him that she wanted him to know what it was like to grow up black in Cambridge and that she wanted to hear from him what it was like growing up white in town. They talked, they exchanged experiences, they got to know one another. The artist explained to the young man what the phrase Black Lives Matter means to black folks, and at one point the young man broke down. He said, I'm so sorry, what can I do? 
The following Sunday afternoon, the young man and his parents went to Ray Street and stood on the sidewalk next to the painting. They were joined by the artists about, along with about 40 other folks from town, black and white. The young man stepped forward and he made a public apology for what he had done. Then he took a paintbrush. He took a paintbrush and he joined the artists in the middle of the street and instead of painting over the damage well the artist she had a, another vision at the top of each tire tread the artist and the young man painted the blooms of beautiful flowers the marks of the tires were now the stems of roses let us love our scripture reading from first john reminds us not in word and speech, but in truth and action. And while no one believes, no one believes that this one event has healed over the great racial divide in Cambridge, Maryland, nor has the conviction this week of Derek Chauvin in the killing of George Floyd made a huge dent in the racism that pervades our nation. I think that they still point to us. They point us to something, and I believe what they point us to are the words of mercy and righteousness that Jesus taught us, Jesus himself, who was love in truth and in action. And Soren Kierkegaard, a Christian philosopher, said more than a hundred years ago now that Jesus wasn't looking for admirers, and oh, how I admire Jesus. He was looking for followers. He wanted people who would walk with him, who would do his work, and who would serve in his name. And one of Kierkegaard's own parables tells of a man, a man who is walking down a city street when he saw a sign in a shop window that said, pants pressed here. He, he was delighted. He, he went back to his uh, apartment and he gathered up all of his wrinkled laundry. He carried it to the shop and he put it down on the counter. The shopkeeper said, what are you doing? He said, well, I brought my clothes here to be pressed just like your sign says. Oh, the shopkeeper said, you've got it wrong. We don't actually do that here. We're in the business of making signs. We don't do those things. We just talk about them. And this week I was having a conversation with the Reverend Dr. Sharon Ledbetter, one of our Gilead Church members, and in our conversation she asked me the question, thinking about my retirement at the end of June, what I hope my legacy would be here at the Gilead Church. The question took me aback. I hadn't thought about a legacy. Gosh, that just seems so big. But it got me thinking. It got me thinking. And if I leave a legacy here at the Gilead Church, may it be love, may it be said, in the time that we have shared together in these 22 years that we, as a community of faith, have not loved in word and speech, that she didn't just preach about love, but that we have loved in truth and in action. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. And will those who can do so comfortably, please stand.
Friends, may we live our lives in truth and in action, and may Jesus, our good shepherd, bless you with all you need, and may God, our Savior, restore your soul each and every day. Go in peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. upon you and be gracious unto you.